Poland takes the helm of the EU's rotating presidency at a critical time. During the second half of this year, Poland will help navigate an enduring financial crisis and shape Europe's future. Hello and welcome. I'm Gemma Slaymaker and this is People First, the program that answers questions from people across Europe, just like you. Joining us on this special edition is Jerzy Buzek, the President of the European Parliament and a Polish member of the group of the European People's Party, the largest in the Parliament. Dzień dobry, Mr. Buzek, and welcome to the program. Uh, good morning. I'm, a, I'm very glad to be invited here. Uh, because as far as I know, it is a rather popular program. It is, we, we hope so. Um, and in fact, this special program is concentrating on all of the questions that we've received, especially for you. There were quite a few, so we've had to narrow them down to foreign policy, budget, energy, education and the parliament itself. Not easy, so rather you than me, and before you decide to change your mind, shall we get started with the first question? Yes, of course, you know, um, questions are not easy, but uh, nothing is easy in the European Union because we are 27 member states and a lot of questions and different points of view. Quite right, and you've actually preempted the first question there. This comes from Christoph from Germany, and he's asking about how the European Union is dealing with the rest of the world. Ja, hallo, guten Tag, Herr Buzek. Mein Name ist Christoph Leisering. Ich bin Student an der Freien Universität in Berlin. Und ich bin sehr interessiert an der Europäischen Union und habe eine Frage an Sie. Und zwar, was kann die Europäische Union tun, um nach außen in einheitlicher aufzutreten, um eine gemeinsame Position zu formulieren für ihre gemeinsame Außenpolitik? Und äh, wie kann sich das Parlament insbesondere dafür einsetzen? Well, the EU has so many foreign policy issues, but what role is Parliament playing in getting the EU 27 to speak with one voice? Well, a quite crucial role, because we have uh, our um, observation missions uh, to different uh, countries outside Europe. And a second important issue is that uh, we have a permanent delegations, groups of uh, members of European Parliament going to certain places all over the world. However, the EU has often been criticised for its delayed response and delayed reaction in times of crisis. And I suppose we should relate to the Middle East crisis, where people said, we did very little, said very little, too late. What would you say to that? Well, uh, just in this case, North Africa, let us say, um, uh, European Union member states and European Union as a whole uh, were, as a matter of fact, uh, the most effective even if we compare with the United States, for, the, for, for the example. Uh, our commissioner for humanitarian aid was the first in Libya in some other places. And also high representative, vice president of the uh, European Commission, uh, which is uh, responsible for our foreign policy, um, went to Middle East and to North Africa very quickly and respond on the expectations and also no-fly zone. It is what was mainly an uh, idea of the uh, European Union uh, with support of United Nations and Arab League. Let me say, let me add, um, uh, Madam Vice President of the European Commission, High Representative, uh, Lady Ashton, is responsible um, in front of European Parliament. Accountability, democratic accountability of our foreign policy is connected with European Parliament because uh, Madame Ashton is coming regularly every two or three months to the European Parliament for the long debate with our members. Another burning issue in times of financial crisis is the budget and in particular the transparency of members' expenses. Let's have a listen. My name is Hugh Evans and I am from Britain, from England, and I am concerned about the fact that the budget has, for the members' expenses, has never yet been audited correctly, and I want to know what you're doing about more honesty, more transparency, and more efficiency in the way that you run the actual members' expenses in this institution. Well, I'm not surprised to hear that from a fellow Brit, given the UK expenses scandal, where basically people felt let down by their MPs. So what would you say to all of the taxpayers out there with regard to the situation in the European Parliament? Yes, we, we changed the status of the assistance, and now all the spendings for our assistance and staff is very transparent. Second, uh, just uh, recently we have finished uh, 
hard work on the new code of conduct for the members of the European Parliament. Three most important issues, uh, transparency for everything what we are doing, uh, conflict of interest, how to define it and how to prevent, how to solve such a problems and how to announce if it disappears. And, um, uh, and the third important point is declaration of financial interest. It means if it is any job outside of European Parliament, we must declare what kind of job, uh, how much uh, we can own. So it is very transparent now. Talking about the budget now, do you think that Europe is in danger of splitting over the budget battle? We have a question on that. Hello, Anne Fraser from Britain. I'm just wondering whether what the British response would, what the European response would be if Britain wanted to pull out of Europe because we're in a very uh, detrimental financial situation at the moment. And it does really look as if we're just puppets on a string and putting a lot of money into Europe. Well, that lady talks about Britain, but of course there is this type of talk emerging in other countries. How do you deal with that as President of the Parliament? Uh, I understand some doubts in the Member States because uh, all of them, or most of them, um, should go through the austerity measures and special type of cutting expenditures. And uh, let me say that if you would like to uh, recover from the crisis or have even exit strategy, because we wouldn't like to have stagnation of our economy, we would like to have growth three, four, five percent per year. That's good for us. We should create such a growth. What is a way of creating growth? Innovation, research, uh, creating single market, creating jobs is the most important for our citizens. So at the end, let us create jobs thanks to European budget because we spend 95% of our European money for investment, 5% for administration. So it's fantastic proportion. Moving swiftly on now to the energy issue, and here's one of our viewers' questions on that. Szép napot a nézőknek. Én Imóti Sándor vagyok, nagy tartsára, nagy tartsa polgármestere, és Buzek úrtól azt kérdezném, hogy milyen szerepet szán a megújuló energiáknak, mert szerintem ez a legfontosabb kérdés ma, ami feszegeti az Uniót. How will the Polish presidency and parliament steer Europe's energy policy? Certainly it is one of the Polish presidency priorities. Our goal number one, energy efficiency and energy savings. Goal number two is of course renewables energy. So we need uh, additional energy resources. For example, um, biomass plant or gas power plant or maybe a nuclear power plant. All the energy resources should be in our energy mix. Renewables are very, very important. 20% of them is a good goal, but we should try to achieve 25 or 24. And we need also resources for research. In the case of using fossil fuels, because we cannot avoid that. Gas, fuel, benzene, or oil, and coal. So let us spend a lot of money, it's very important, for common European research. Education is also on people's minds, especially youthful ones. Let's take a look. Hello, I am Rebecca Eikenboom and I come from Netherlands. I have a question. Goes you through with the Erasmus system so that I later in the outside can go study? What is the future of the Erasmus programme? Well, Rebecca, you have a lot of possibilities to go for for Erasmus programme. Uh, if you are younger to, to Comenius, uh, later to Leonardo da Vinci, to Grundvix, uh, a lot of programs. Marie Curie, very good program. Um, Youth in Action, quite a new program. Or Erasmus Mundus, a lot of programs. Um, uh, 20 million uh, of um, young people 
from the European Union since uh, 1985, beginning of uh, Erasmus, uh, could um, attend this fantastic programme. It, it is a fantastic programme. As a former Erasmus student, I'm very glad that it's continuing in all these different forms. In closing now, Mr Buzek, we have a question for you on the chamber that you preside over. Ik ben Fokko Werkman, ik kom uit Zwolle en van het Gredaans College. Ik heb de volgende vraag. Hoe kan de president de kloof tussen het parlement en de bevolkingsgroepen in alle landen verkleinen? Wat gap do you see and how to close it? Well, of course I see the gap. But we should try to be closer. We have um, uh, our website and uh, well, uh, live transmission from our committee meetings. We have um, a r other uh, very interesting discussion which we could uh, put live in our TV. And we also try to be, as a member of the Parliament, to be present in our constituencies. It's very important. It is a shame that not everyone knows their MEPs and, and the good work that is being done in the Parliament. But that is changing, uh, President, and we wish you all the very best in your term of office. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your hectic schedule to answer those questions for us. That's all for now on People First. Thank you very much for watching. If you would like more information on our group's activities on these and other issues, please visit our website at eppgroup.eu. We'll be back in September with more People First. Until then, take care and enjoy the summer. <laughs>